Since the early days of the build of a television, there has always been television high jackings. Television high jackings are high jackings made by individuals, individuals who want to disrupt the regular schedule of programming for whatever reason. But, but what if I told you that there is a lesser known television hijacking that no one knows about? A lot more disturbing than stuff like Max Headroom and the like. Well, today we'll be listening to that right now. So join me as we take a look of the story called Broadcast Interruption. You might already have heard of the TV broadcast hijacking in Santa South Carolina. The stories gained pretty wide currency on the internet, and part of the broadcast is available on YouTube, assuming it hasn't been taken down for whatever reason. For the unentitled, the Skankana hijacking is one of the lesser known broadcast signal interruptions. It was big news here, but the nascent news media barely touched on it for whatever reason. Anyway, I decided to dot down my impressions of the whole thing. Even though other eyewitnesses have always described it more better than I could. I was at home on winter break when it happened making chemistry flashcards in front of the TV. No one else was around. After watching the umpty Vlan Oli one, I got bored and started channel surfing. A couple of minutes later, I stumbled onto the city public access center where, bizarrely enough, my old high school Latin teacher was reciting a poem while wearing this dorky three-coiled hat. I watched for a few minutes and had a good laugh. I remember him as a pretty serious guy. Not the sort of person who embarrasses himself in public like this. When suddenly there was this staggy crackle and the screen cut to this multicolored test pattern. Before I had time to change the channel, there was another crackle and this weird cartoon shows up on screen. The animation style was detailed but kind of jiggly and rough. It reminded me of those old anti-drug PSAs. Anyways, it seemed normal, though at first. An ordinary-looking middle-class family eating breakfast together on a round kitchen table. There was a mom with an old-fashioned hairdo, a dad, two tail-faced kids, a boy and a girl. All very Norman Rockwell. The villain is making but a little small talk. The dad complains about his day at the office. The kids ramble about soccer practice, and so on. Gradually, though, the scene starts to get slightly sinister. A green light is seeping through the open window, and the family starts to inquire a dejected, unhealthy look. Their skin changes color and their eyes become sunken. In the background, a Droning radio broadcast slowly becomes audible. The announcer gives the date as November 15th, 2017, and starts going on and on and on about some strange crisis. You can barely hear what he's saying. He says something about a green light, melting flesh, mutations, strange shapes emerging from the sea. Again and again, the phrase Report to the nearest shelter immediately is audible. Still, the family keeps eating breakfast as though nothing was happening. And then, well, it gets really disturbing. The family finishes eating breakfast, and the mom loads the kids into a minivan. By now, they look really unhealthy. Their bodies had were skeletally thin. The whites of their eyes are a sickly yellowish color, and their hair is disheveled and messy. The car drives through a landscape bath in the green gold from before. 
strange shape bob in and out of the screen but you can't quite tell what they are and all the buildings and the buildings the car passes look withered and disordered finally the car stops at a playground and the mom drops off the kids before driving away there are large hard colored rocks all over the ground and morning could be heard in the distance the kids hung lifelessly on the monkey bars for a while eventually the camera pans over the playground and you see the rocks littering the ground aren't rocks at all but instead naked human forms horribly disfigured they seem to be either growing into or from the ground i can't say which and they were very much alive behind the monkey bars a tree can be seen with a human face growing from the trunk its features are contorted in agony the scene suddenly sips to a white collar office where the children's father is stood over a desktop typing away his feet are as skeletal and dis disfigured as that of the other family members and the office is covered in a green glow in the other cubicles fleshless corpses sit up by on their desk frozen and deaf finally we see the family return home for the evening walking through the front door together their skin is no longer simply jagged but actually melting off dripping from their outstretched arms and running down their face is in drops as they are literally falling to pieces the family sits down in the dining room and begin wordlessly to eat dinner their flesh becomes more and more amorphous ribbons of skin dangling from their bodies like the tentacles of an octopus I could barely describe it but they somehow begin to merge with the tails they are sitting on or while their skin grows over them by now their skin had the consistency of melted ice cream and they are barely recognizable as human except for their eyes which somehow remain intact the camera zooms closer and closer to the table and finally the eyes all move directly towards the camera conveying a feeling of indescribable sadness the screen goes black and large white letters appear on the screen we'll put to the nearest cell to immediately remaining at private residence is strictly prohibited and with that the screen turned to static I stared in stunned silence for a few minutes before the local channel switched back on. And that's all I know. Really. I almost thought I was dreaming until the paper reported the story the next day. God knows what really happened. A ridiculously elaborate prank? An ill-advised viral marketing campaign? The crazy old parts of the internet have their own theories. You can look up the video yourself if you're morbidly curious. All I know is, what I saw that day will never leave my mind as long as I live.